Well, it's Labor Day weekend in the United States, and I thought it might be fun to talk about occupations of our ancestors and how they can help you with your research of your family tree. Many of our ancestors are listed as farmer or laborer, but there's actually a lot more to it that we can learn. Also, I've run across the occupations like slasher or spinner. Do you know what those are? Bet not. All right, well, we're gonna dig into all that, but first, hey, I want to let you know that this is being sponsored by the Genealogy TV Academy. We'll talk more about that later. Oh, and there is a handout for this. It's about three pages long. I'm still working on it, but that's about what it is at the moment as of this recording. There's links in the description box about how to find that. All right, let's talk about occupations. Occupations are one of those pieces of information that can help us tie our records together. For example, I'm looking at two records, say, with the same name. It could be that the occupation, let's say a school teacher, that information might give me more confidence that the record that I'm looking at ties together with other records. So I've run across a lot of different occupations in my research. Some of them are obvious and some of them are not so much. For example, do you know what a fuller is? This is someone who folds cloth by increasing the weight and bulk of fabric by shrinking, beating, and pressing it. This was something that was done. I think it probably is still done today. You could have occupations like a rural route carrier, which is a mailman, right? You could have soldiers and priests and religious leaders. You could have peddlers, which is basically a salesman. You could have cobblers that made shoes, coopers that made barrels, casks, and other containers. You could have a miller, which is basically somebody who worked in a mill grinding grains into flour. There were tinsmiths and wainwrights. Now, wainwrights were crafting wagons and carts. They were also known as a cartwright sometimes. You could have a blacksmith working with iron or metal, crafting tools and objects, even sometimes horseshoes. So it could be, you know, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, whatever it is that you have for occupations in your family tree, you need to kind of be keeping track of this, all right? So that points to the occupations that help tie our ancestors' records together. It's just another one of those facts that we need to be keeping an eye on. Occupations were often handed down from one generation to another. So a father often taught his son the family trade. Keep that in mind. Now, names can be a clue sometimes. So sometimes our ancestors carried occupational names, such as you might have something like a blacksmith in your smith line. You may have a tailor in your tailor line. Other occupational surnames might include carpenter, baker, fisher, miller, farmer, weaver, cooper, and mason, just to name a few. I have a wagoner in my family tree. A wagoner was someone who transported things via a wagon, so he was a transportation guy. You know, kind of like a trucker back in the old days, okay? We don't know what kind of information we're gonna find regarding occupations until we do the research. That's one of the reasons why we want to be looking at the occupations because it helps tie records together. Now, how do you find these occupations? You can find occupations in a variety of records, most notably census records. You may find mortuary records that list an occupation. A lot of times you'll find it in obituaries. Finding the definitions. Let's talk about this for a second. Knowing the context in which your ancestor worked can help us tell the story of our family history. For example, when I was doing some client research in the past, the occupation of the slasher came up. I had to do some research to figure out what this was. In 1940 census, it revealed that this guy, his name was David Coleman, worked in a cotton mill in Guilford County, North Carolina. Now, while the 1940 census listed him as a laborer, as we often see, further research revealed that he had worked in the same cotton mill his entire life and it was in the 1930 census that revealed that he was a slasher and his wife was a spinner. So what are these? This is where Google search can be your friend. Searching Google, I found a UK website that found a slasher was the name of someone who used to use the machinery, a slashing machine or a slasher machine, which did the sizing in a text mill. These threads were uh, dipped in starch and then passed over a heated drum to dry them before moving on to the next phase of manufacturing. Further research, I learned that this was a brutally hot job, especially in the summertime in this Southern North Carolina town. So special thanks to a guy named L. McKay Watley, who is a historian in Randolph County, North Carolina. He did this document 
about the cotton textile manufacturing process in Randolph County, which is really not far from where this guy David Coleman was living in Guilford County, okay? It revealed more information about the cotton mill manufacturing process. I learned a ton in this document. I'll leave a link if you wanna learn more about cotton mills in the description box. This was extremely helpful to have an understanding along with photographs of the kind of work that this guy and his wife did in the cotton mill along the way. If you're learning something so far, hit the like button, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, David's wife was a spinner, so I looked that up. I did a little Google search and Wikipedia says that cotton spinning machinery is a machine which processes or spins prepared cotton roving into workable yarn or a thread. Such machinery can be dated back centuries. During the 18th and 19th centuries, as part of the Industrial Revolution, cotton spinning machinery was developed to bring mass production to the cotton industry. Okay, so I think you've gotten enough on the cotton industry, but all of this fits with the area in which my client's ancestor was working in the 1900s, early, early 1900s, okay? I then went to the North Carolina archives. I did a little bit more uh, research on the town and the cotton mill and the surrounding neighborhoods for my client. And why would I do this? Because I need more context, right? So many of these industries, such as textile industry, steel mills, manufacturing plants, all had neighborhoods that were owned by the manufacturing plants. And then they would house their workers in these neighborhoods near the plant for super cheap rent. In the census records, you'll see multiple people living in the same neighborhood and they're all working for the same, in this case, cotton mill. And you can see that the rents were all like four and five dollars depending on the size house they were living in. So the workers paid the rent to the plant, the plant gave them a wage as well, and these neighborhoods you would see street after street after street of workers that were all working in the shadow of the manufacturing companies. You can see this in the 1930 census where every worker in this family was paying four to five dollars a month for rent and all of the workers were employed by the same cotton mill. This is context for your family history. Learn more about occupations for your ancestors. Do this through research. Don't stop with just what you see in the census record. Do a little bit more research about the company that they worked for or the neighborhood they lived in. And also know that some additional records may be found. Things like agricultural schedules, if they owned a farm. You may find trade associations, journals, newsletters, go to Family Search Wiki, drill into the country, and then click on occupations. On the right hand side, you'll see what is online and where to find it. So all of these hyperlinks can really help you. They show lawyers and railroad workers and government employees, bricklayers, masons, plaster unions, right? So you can find a lot of this stuff on the Family Search Wiki. At Ancestry, go to the card catalog and filter by country and then the keyword occupation. Also look in city directories. They often show the person's occupation. Now think of the tools of the trade for a moment. A lot of times you can find these tools in the inventories of wills that our ancestors left behind. So look for items in the inventory. In the probate packets, people will skip over the inventory, but a lot of times you will see inventory of all of their tools. Even if they're just a farmer, it would show all the farming instruments. All of that stuff has to be inventoried in a will or in an estate. Let's talk about books for a moment. Now there's a couple books you can find about really just defining what some of these old occupations are. There is the Dictionary of Old Occupations that comes out of the UK. There is Ancestry's Concise Genealogical Dictionary. I have this one sitting on my shelf for sure because every now and then I just find it really helpful. All right, so tell us what kind of occupations your ancestors had, and if you have learned what the definition is of that, put it in the comment section so that others can learn as well. All right, so what is Labor Day? According to the US Department of Labor, this is observed the first Monday in September. Now, Labor Day is an annual celebration of the social and economic achievements of American workers. So celebrate your ancestors and their working achievements by documenting them in your family history. I promised that you could learn a little bit more about the Genealogy TV Academy. We'll jump over there right now. Hey, did you know that you can get everything I produce all in one place, commercial free? Well, now you can at the Genealogy TV Academy. 
For one membership price, you can get an all access pass that includes all of the online courses, all of the YouTube channel videos dating back to 2022, early release of any new videos coming up on the YouTube channel, the live classroom instruction via Zoom, and the handouts and worksheets associated with all the videos. If you want to learn more, go to genealogytv.org forward slash academy. If you want to learn more about the Genealogy TV Academy, make sure you click, I don't know, there's a button around here somewhere that you can click uh, to learn a little bit more about the Genealogy TV Academy. And there are more videos on the screen for your binge watching pleasure. We'll catch you in the next one.